Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna do something different. We're gonna ask ChatGPT to do a financial model for a renewable energy project for us. Let's get started. The goal of today's video is to provide ChatGPT with the inputs we have in this Excel file here, then asking it to make the calculations we have in here, and last, check whether it's able to calculate the project's NPV and IRR. Let's see how it goes. The first thing I did was to write a prompt that I could copy and paste into ChatGPT. And this is what I wrote. I want you to build a cash flow analysis for a solar PV project and return the project's NPV and IRR. You should consider the following information for the model. Then, I have here the same inputs as we have in the Excel file. And here they are. The period of analysis should be 15 years. The currents should be USD. The production of electricity should be 45,000 megawatt hour per year. The capex should be $15 million. The OPEX should be $10 per megawatt hour. The price of electricity or PPA price should be $50 per megawatt hour. The tax rate is 20%. The depreciation schedule is 10 years in a straight line method. And the discount rate is equal to 4.5% per year. To provide some extra information, first one is that I want the results to be printed in a table format. So I can copy and paste it to Excel. Then I also ensure that each one of the periods should represent one year and that period zero should represent the year of construction and the remaining years from period one to 15 should represent the operations years of the power plant. And lastly, I just asked ChatGPT to order the columns in the table as per the following periods, production, capex, revenues, opex, EBITDA, depreciation, taxable income, payable tax, and cash flow after tax. This is the same order we have in the calculations part of the Excel file. So let's see how it goes. Already on ChatGPT, she did the calculations for me. I just asked first that I need assistance and whether it could help me build in a cash flow analysis. And it came back with a lot of blah, 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 that I didn't really bother reading because it doesn't matter. So next, I said, cool. So here are the instructions. And I copied and pasted the prompt that I had already prepared. And it started populating with the answer. It says, sure, I can help you build the cash flow analysis for the solar PV project based on information you provided. Let's calculate the cash flows for each period and then determine the NPV and RRR. So here's the first thing. I didn't ask yet for the NPV and RRR calculations, but it assumes that's part of the cash flow analysis, as these indicators represent the final answer to our analysis, which is good. Then it continues. Here's the table format for the cash flow analysis. Let's see how it goes. First thing I'm gonna check is whether it printed all the columns as requested. And up here we have the columns, as you can see highlighted in here. Let's see if we have them. So periods, production, capex, revenues, opex, EBITDA, depreciation, taxable income, payable tax, and cash flow after tax. So in principle, it printed everything as requested. Let's check now each one of the columns and whether it's correct or not. But first we're gonna just split uh, the view into the Excel file and the chat GPT. The first thing to notice in here is that chat GPT did not print all the periods from zero up to 15. It is kept most of it. But that's okay because you can still go through the table and make sure the numbers are printed correct. Next, let's go and analyze the production. We have here an array of 45,000 megawatt hours per year from periods one to 15. So that's correct, as you can see here in the Excel file. No comments in here. Next, 
comes the capex, which is $50 million in period zero. That is correct, as you can see here. The only difference, though, is that ChatGPT uses a positive number for the capex, while in my Excel file, all my costs are represented with negative sign. As long as at the end of the analysis, ChatGPT considers costs as a negative number, everything should be okay. Then we have the revenues, which is $2,250,000 from periods 1 to 15. And that's again correct, as we can see here in our Excel file. For the OPEX, we have $450,000, and the number is correct, except that I'm using negative sign, but that's nothing to be worried about. Next, we have the EBITDA, which is $1.8 million. Now, let's check whether this is correct. And when we go back here to Excel file, we can see that our EBITDA is also $1.8 million. So, so far, everything is good. The next column in our analysis is the depreciation schedule. And as we can see here, for all the periods from 1 to 15, chat GPT has printed $1.5 million. When you look in the Excel file here, the number is correct, except for the difference in the sign. But what chat GPT did not get right here is that it's considering 1.5 million for all the periods during the operations phase. And this is not correct. As stated in our inputs, we need to depreciate the asset in 10 years. And that's where the 1.5 million comes from. So this is the first mistake it did. Let's continue and see if there is any more mistakes that needs to be fixed. The next column is the taxable income, which is $300,000. Again, this number is correct all the way through years 1 to 10, except that on year 11, we need to pay more tax because there is no depreciation. Therefore, our taxable income should be corrected. We don't need to worry about this now because as soon as we fix the depreciation, the taxable income should be corrected. Let's go to the next column, which is the payable tax. We have $60,000 for all the periods during operation. Looking back here in our Excel file, we also have the $60,000 for all the periods up to period 10. And thereafter, we're going to pay more tax because we are no longer account for the depreciation. And ChatGPT, of course, did not catch it. But again, once we fix the depreciation schedule, I expect that this is also be fixed by ChatGPT. Next, we're going to go to the cash flow after tax. And what we have here is $1.74 million per given year. Looking back here, the number is correct. And of course, it is just wrong after the year number 10. And there is one more problem in here. Chat GPT needs to include here the capex. Because our cash flow after tax, for the purpose of calculating the NPV and RR, needs to account for it. And that's where I think it will get wrong, because for the cash flow after tax, the capex should have a negative sign. We are done now with the first analysis. Overall, ChatGPT did a very good job. It missed two things. It calculated depreciation schedules for the whole period of analysis, which is wrong. And it did not account for the capex for the cash flows after tax column. Let's try to fix it now. After, I decided to ask ChatGPT to fix the depreciation schedule. And this is what I wrote. Depreciation schedule should be for 10 years. After that, there is no more depreciation. Can you fix it? And it comes back with, certainly, my apologies for the oversight. I'll correct the depreciation schedule to consider depreciation for the first 10 years and then stop it for the remaining years. Here's the updated table format for the cash flow analysis. Let's see what we have in here. So now it printed more rows, and I think the reason is because it wants to show me that it's no longer count for the depreciation after year 10. Let's see what it did. Let's go directly to the depreciation and see if this is correct. 
And what we can see here is that we now have a 1.5 million depreciation only between periods 1 to 10, and this is correct. What we need to check is whether the calculation now is correct for all the other columns. And as we can see here, it is. Let's compare now the results with the Excel file. Looking here in the Excel file, we have the depreciation finished in year 10, which is correct. Then for the taxable income, we're going to have $300,000 up to year 10. And thereafter, it's going to be $1.8 which we also have in here. So that's correct. For the payable tax, we're going to have $60,000 up to year 10. And from year 11, we're going to have 360, which is correct. And the same for the cash flow after tax, which should be 1.74 million for up to year 10. And thereafter should be 1.44, which is correct. So let's continue our analysis and now ask ChatGPT to fix the capex in the cash flow after tax. Let's see how that goes. To fix the cash flows, I asked ChatGPT. In your cash flow after tax, you're missing the capex. Can you add it? And it replied, apologies for the oversight. Yeah, as always, you're right. I missed including the capex in the cash flow after tax for period zero, which is good because it already detected that the cash flows after tax should be in period zero. Let's correct that and include the capex in the cash flow after tax for period zero. Here's the updated cash flow table. So let's go to escape already directly to the last column and see what's going on here. And I cannot see it. There's no capex in here. Let's see what it writes. Now the cash flow after tax for period zero should be negative value of the capex as it represents the initial investment. That's correct. But you're still missing to give us the capex. There's no capex in here. So let's continue. Let me know if you need any further assistance. Yes, I do. You need to add the capex into the column. That's what's missing. So that was my next question to chat to DPT. And it says, apologies for the confusion. Let's go to the last column and see if now it got it right. We screw over here. We can see now that the, the cash flow after tax, it is in fact negative $15 million, which is correct. So now we should have everything correct. I'm just going to go back to the Excel file and I'm going to scroll down here to our cash flow after tax. And as you can see here, we're going to have for the period zero, we're going to have a negative $15 million. Then from period one up to period 10, we're going to have $1,740,000, which we have in here. And then thereafter, we're going to have $1.44 million which we also have in here. So everything looks okay now. The last part of the analysis was to ask it to calculate the NPV and RRR, which according to my Excel file should be $2,838,761 for the NPV and an RRR of 7.24%. Let's see how ChatGPT does. Here is my question. Now it is correct. Can you please calculate the NPV and RRR? And it says, absolutely. And it starts throwing a lot of text here to me. And as I go through here, I cannot find the answer. And I ask it again, okay, what is the answer for the NPV and RRR? And it kept printing a lot of things that doesn't really matter. And when I finally found a number here, it gives me $8 million, which is completely wrong. And for the RR, it gives me 9.39%. It says, please compare the result with your own calculations to ensure accuracy. If you have any further questions or need additional assistance, feel free to ask. I wrote, this is not correct. Can you please print the table with the cash flows for all periods from 0 to 15? And it goes in here and does print. My assumption here was that it was calculating the RR and NPV only based on the numbers that it was printed in here. Because as you can see here, it does not print the cash flows for every single period. It goes up to period 2 and then it skips straight away to period 10. So my assumption was that it was calculating the NPV only based on the numbers that it printed above here. But as we go down here, you can see it printed correctly all the cash flows after tax. So there's no error in here. 
but if it keeps scrolling down here, now it gives me another number, which makes no sense at all, because now we have a lower NPV and a higher RRR, which is a completely nonsense. So I said, can you give me the NPV formula with all the periods in attempt to correct the NPV? But as we go down here, it gives me everything, but it doesn't calculate the NPV. Then I ask it, can you calculate it? And it comes back with a completely different number now. So first we had 8 million, then we had 6 million, now we have 6.6 .6 million. And I keep trying to fix it, and as you can see here, but unfortunately, nothing happens. And to the point to say, this is correct. I'm only referring back to the table above here, which I asked ChatGPT to reprint everything to me. And I say, in Excel, I'm getting that the NPV discounted at 4.5% is 2,800,000. Is this correct? And it says, apologies for the confusion, this is correct. And it gives me the right NPV of $2,838,000. Then I asked, okay, so what is the RR for this cash flow then? And it comes back with a lot of information that doesn't really matter. And when I look to the results, it gives me 12.21%. And I say, this is the RR I get. It's 7.24%. And again, it recalculates everything. Just to confirm that what I told it was the correct number, it is in fact the correct number. Of course, this is not what we're looking for because the RR and the NPV are the most important things of the cash flows analysis we're doing. But I decided to try one step further and I ended up asking ChatGPT. Now, I want you to consider the project will be financed with debt. Here are the terms. Then I give three inputs for the debt. The debt tenor is 10 years. The interest rate is 5% per year. And the debt to equity ratio is 50%. Can you calculate the principal repayment and the interest to be paid, as well as recalculate the taxable income payable tax and cash flow for the equity investor. So I was trying really to see whether ChatGPT can go a further step, where do we really want to go when I'm doing the cash flow analysis? What would be the returns to the cash flow investor if we were to consider that? Because most of the renewable energy projects will have some sort of debt. And of course, it was a long bet that I didn't win because it just couldn't handle the calculations. And as you can see here in the table, it does add interest, principal, and try to recalculate everything. But for some particular reason that I was not able to understand, it did not print any number. It just prints a bunch of text that doesn't make any sense. I tried to correct it here below, but it did not work. So as you can see here, on my second attempt, uh, it was just printing still the same, no sense. So, so what are the takeaways from this exercise? First, ChatGPT can do, in fact, some sort of analysis and at least print to us the cash flow analysis. But the second point is, it is not able to calculate the most important things of it, which is the NPV and RRR. And third, when you try to increase the complexity of the cash flow analysis with the inclusion of that, ChatGPT just gets lost. As a result, if you think that you can rely on ChatGPT to make cash flow analysis, I would reconsider your assumptions. That's it for today. But before we finish, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you liked what you just discussed today. I see you in the next video.